There has never been a better moment to be a Formula 1 team owner than now. But as the good times roll in, Haas might miss out due to underinvestment, which could make it the grid's ugly sister for eternity. Owner Gene Haas needs to step up and make the most of his permitted investment in the club, or sell the team to someone who will. Of course, there's a middle ground wherein the required cash may be raised by selling minority ownership. For instance, Alpine sold an investment group 24% of its Formula 1 team, but they still have control. However, the key issue is that Haas runs the danger of losing this incredible chance. Haas's subpar on-track performance in 2023 makes it easy to condemn the company, but that isn't the primary symptom of the issue. Rather, the question should be whether a team that survived the COVID-19 epidemic and did a fantastic job of establishing itself in Formula One is squandering the chance that Formula One's current expansion offers. The team in question is one that accomplished much during considerably more challenging financial circumstances. Because Haas F1 is only one of 10 F1 teams, it is still extremely valuable. Forbes valued the squad at $780 million earlier this year, and because there are plenty of eager investors looking for chances to invest in teams or even purchase them outright, there's no reason why that value couldn't be achieved. It may even be greater for purchasers who are adequately driven, and there are some of them out there. But the notion of multi-billion dollar teams isn't simply being fueled by Formula One's increasing popularity. Given the potential rewards on offer, the current financial conditions are better than they have been in decades thanks to the cost cap, which is set at a baseline of $135 million per season, and the more equitable distribution of the team's share of F1 revenue. For Haas, therefore, the circumstances are ideal. Bending was unrestricted upon its 2016 grid integration. Thus, even substantial investments may be considered a drop in the ocean. Consequently, even if you invest hundreds of millions of dollars in your team every year, you may see little to no return in terms of value or competitiveness. After five years of competition, owner Gene Haas openly questioned whether it was worth it to continue given the difficulty of finding sponsors, implying that it could be time to retire. That was before the outbreak of COVID-19, which had a devastating financial impact and made Haas's future appear gloomy. But Haas has survived that storm because team principal Gunther Steiner took the decision to take on drivers that provided money, most notably Nikita Mazepin and his Urakali money, and minimize expenditure on on-track performance in the remaining months of 2020 and 2021. Signing the new and more advantageous Concord Agreement allowed a team that might have otherwise been forced to close to enter the exciting new world of Formula One racing. Furthermore, with the construction of a design office in Marinello, led by technical director Simone Resta, the team was in a superior technical position. Though it still works closely with Italian chassis maker Dallara and maintains a technical cooperation with Ferrari, which supplies all parts allowed by the rules, Haas is now more of a complete Formula One team than it has ever been. Haas now has to expand on it, but it doesn't seem like he has the entire budget to do so. In order to optimize an F1 team's performance, they must not only stay inside the spending ceiling, which Haas was this year, but also stay within the allowed capital investment limit. This allotment was recently raised by an additional $20 million, which may be used to purchase essential instruments and infrastructure. Spending is high among Haas's direct competitors. Williams is steadily expanding thanks to consistent funding from Doralton Capital. Sauber is gaining from Audi funding, and AlphaTauri is modernizing its facilities by shifting a portion of its operations to Red Bull's Milton Keynes site. Haas must maintain the pace to avoid falling behind. Even though Haas has landed some profitable partners, including title sponsor MoneyGram and recent edition Play and Go, it's unlikely that he'll have the money to match them all. It's also a major setback to finish last in the Constructors' Championship when it had a chance to finish as high as 7th. That's a difference of almost $30 million, considering that the prize money for each rank varies by about $10 million. Haas ranked 7th in 2022, so it represents a $20 million reduction in one source of revenue. Since a top-up is unlikely to make up for that, raising more funds will be necessary to approach the investment level required to accomplish more than tread water. We just need to make it up, Steiner tells the race when asked about the financial impact of finishing last. We found more partners. We announced Play and Go in Las Vegas. They are big partners and they help make up the losses. But in the end, we need to see where we find the additional financing. However, Steiner also defends the team's position on the basis that it's all well and good to throw cash in, but it depends on investing it properly. I look back to the old days when people said money makes you the best team. It didn't because some people spent a lot of money and didn't win anything, so you need to be careful, says Steiner.
It needs not to be an expenditure, but investment. That's the key word here. What do you invest in to get better? It's not that you get a return tomorrow. It takes time. A lot of people speak about investment, and it's a lot of propaganda. It's about whether the investment works out. That is accurate, but competitors' misallocation of capital is not always predictable. If Haas wants to become more than a dependable back-of-the-grid operation, it must stay up to date. One may contend that Gene Haas has every right to point to the team's current underperformance as proof that the level of spending isn't the issue. He would be correct in as much as its troubles in 2023 aren't directly related to it, although it has the means to do noticeably better, without a doubt. But that would miss the bigger picture. While the 2023 Haas was quick around the circuit, it chewed through its tires during racing stints, making points scarce. That was the result of some clumsy technical decision-making and the inability to alter the course of the aerodynamic design, which led to months of inaction in the search for performance in the wind tunnel. The team thinks that by using this approach, they will have sped up their learning curve and be able to incorporate that information into the 2024 vehicle. The result was a hurriedly developed change in aerodynamic concept that was delivered late in the season and wasn't an immediate hit. According to Steiner, we got hit pretty bad with not making progress in development. We gave it our all. There was no cap on our work, and we had the funds to make the improvements. The main reason we didn't discover any performance was that everyone believes we don't improve because we don't have the money. Additionally, we should have noticed that sooner, since by the time we realized it, it was a little too late. The team isn't that awful. We simply need to improve in the wind tunnel. The only reason it can't be better is that we didn't discover anything. Instead of depending on Ferrari for the majority of its vehicles, Haas has opted for a smart approach in which it can concentrate on improving the manufacture of the listed team elements that significantly impact performance without any urgent plans to venture out on its own. Furthermore, there is without a shadow of a doubt that aerodynamic, not mechanical, issues cause the 2023 difficulties. Still, there's a lot that can be accomplished with the present company plan. And that's what Gene Haas needs to spend money on in order for the team to expand over the long run, alongside its competitors and achieve maximum performance within the present limits. Haas should have a stronger season next year, and there's no reason why it can't place higher in the championship. Making the most of its existing aerodynamic capacity is the present short-term aim. However, that goes hand-in-hand -hand with the team's progress, which will require optimizing the investment. Its camper in the paddock, which it has been using since 2016, is one glaring illustration of where it lags. Even though it may not seem like it has anything to do with the car's performance, having the tiniest facilities in the paddock makes a statement visually when you're trying to attract partners. These are the areas where funding might have a beneficial impact, and to guarantee that the growth rate is maximized over the next several years, it would likely only take an additional 50 to 100 million dollars. Those who have followed the Haas narrative for the past 10 years find it irritating that despite all of its accomplishments and perseverance, the company still runs the danger of failing to make the necessary moves to maximize both its value and performance potential. Since he owns the club, Gene Haas ultimately has the final say, but it seems absurd to go through all of that and invest so much, then neither give up to let someone else do it, nor contribute what is essentially a minimal amount to finish the job. That's all guys, will Haas have a stronger season next year? Do let us know your views in the comments below, and subscribe to our channel for more information.